Welcome everyone. I'm Kevin Carpenter, volunteer at CPPCon, and this morning, uh, I think I said this morning the last time we did this because you're East Coast, I'm West Coast, so <laughs> morning works. Patrice Roy, how are you doing this morning, Patrice? I'm doing fine. There's a heat wave where I am, and I, I removed the, the ventilator sounds just to talk to you because I like you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I do have to ask, though, what is your, your, your definition of heat wave is, is around what temperature? Well, the, the, my region, I'm, I'm close to Montreal, so there's a lot of water where I am. And the, uh, the humidity factor plays a big role. So oh, yesterday, yes, it does. you were at 41. It's, it's yes. 41 Celsius. Yes. And, and when you take 41 plus the humidity, that is... Um, it, it is absurd, yeah. So, so yeah. My, my, my fridge broke and my AC broke the same, the same week. It's, oh. it's a thick week. <laughs> Yeah, here in Arizona, we start off with a very dry, you know, we do have that dry heat, but then we have the summer monsoons. And once that hits, um, our our humidity is at 50, 60 percent as well. And it's just, ah, uh, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. So, Patrice, uh, we're going to talk today about your class, Thinking Small. But for people that don't know you, like I've gotten to know you, uh, let's tell them a bit about you. Okay. Well, well, I've been I've been doing C++ for a long while now, for over thirty years. I've been teaching for twenty four years now. Just a bit crazy. I have a number of cats and a number of children, so that's what I do. <laughs> I work with programmers mostly. That my 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 main clientele, I'd say, I teach at, at various level of, of graduate and undergrads, and and my main um, I'd say professional clientele is is uh, game programmers. So this uh, influences the way I teach and the examples I use in my class. Ah, absolutely, I can see that. And so that brings us to your class, thinking small. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think of, I, I play with Arduinos, you know, and, and so it's a microcontroller. Growing up when I was in high school, our electronics, uh, you actually built a wire wrapped, you know, Z80 tied to a keyboard. So back then it was, you know, very, very small. But, but how does that kind of relate in what you teach today? Oh, that's amusing. Okay, so, so I, I'm not presuming that anyone will have special hardware coming in. You can have just laptops. I'm only mm -hmm. using standard C++ stuff. That's the goal. Um, and I'm only trying to write portable code with people, so that if they use whatever compiler they like, it's going to work still. So the, the idea of that class came, we were discussing my PhD offline earlier, came because when I was writing my own stuff for my PhD, I ended up writing some kind of virtual machine with multi-threading agents and stuff in C++. It was under two megabytes overall. Whereas wow. if you write a hello world in some other popular languages, you start with nine megabytes and go up. <laughs> <laughs> gives you insane control over those things. And you can actually benefit from that if you're writing all sorts of interesting stuff, including embedded systems, of course. And in games, my people, they tend to try to get every little bit of memory they can because they want to push more goodies in there, see? So right. they like control. So we, uh, we, we, we look from different angles as to ways to make your code and your data smaller and more efficient, and your programs run faster along the way, yeah. That's... That sounds excellent. Um, with the programming that you're doing with that, is it is there a lot of, you know, when you're doing representation, what kind of tools do you use to measure the size? Is it strictly more on the binary or is it about the memory usage as well? Yeah, well, well th th there's many angles to that. So we, we, we do... We we use the language itself, of course, things like size of and align of, because we play with size and alignment. Uh, we, we do introduce tools from time to time. I try to use the online stuff if I can, because it's pretty cool. People can use it at home. So there's, I don't have the names uh, close by, but yeah, we, we take a number of uh, weird measurements, but we do take measurements in terms of speed and size as we go along all the time. So we uh, compare different representations and see what gives the best results under this angle, that angle, and try to make things fit. We, we look at some small things as to, uh, as when you move data around from this location to this location, your object, what kind of impact does it have? And my mindset with that is that I get a lot of experienced programmers in my classes, mostly in the evening classes. They, they come from Java background, C-sharp background. They, they, 
they're surprised that you can look at code from that angle and that switching the location of a variable can have such a big impact on your code and the size it occupies. So there's uh, an, an enlightenment that comes along with this. So, so yeah, it's kind of fun. So when we were talking earlier too, you know, cause you know, I was reading like one of the parts where you're working to get things onto certain cache lines and stuff. And of course, you know, when we talked before, um, in 2020, or yeah, 2020, 2020. In 2020, uh, you were doing managing memory, which I know you had that class set for this year too, but um, you're just gonna focus on thinking small. But it seems to me like there'd be some overlap between those two. I mean, if someone was looking at managing memory, would they still you know, find value, you think, with? I, I think so. Last year I was kind of scared because I gave both classes and some people were in both of them, like at least three of them. I, I, I do think we should ask them, of course, but I do think they had fun still because the, there's a com, uh, communal interests in both, let's put it this way. And there's uh, there are like kind of two angles of attack on the same issue of performance and getting the most out of your hardware, we could put it this way. <clears throat> so I think people who would have liked to go to managing memory this year or were thinking about it, they could actually benefit from that because they will get kind of the same um, results from it, but from a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a different point of view. That's, yeah. I would be, I was actually, I was, you know, I'm thinking about it because I was going back through looking at talks that you've done, trying to see, you know, bits and pieces of things where, because there's some parts where like, you know, when I speak with Klaus, some of Klaus's things that he has in his uh, class actually show up in his talks. You know, if you watch not near the depth and to be able to sit in a class with Klaus, you know, and actually have him help you out with code is, is a great thing. I think that's the thing with all the academy classes. Um, yeah. It's so much more fun with us, two or four of us, being in the room with people, passing by and saying, oh, there's a comma missing, or something like that. It's pretty fun. The, the, the ambiance is not the same thing. It's much more pleasant and human that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I've enjoyed being, you know, I spent a lot of time working from home before COVID. And then I was back in an office, and I've really liked being there with my team, having everyone around. Um, and it's funny now because our company has moved to where everybody is a work from home. It's by choice and they don't see that changing at the same time, as much as I would like to go back to the office, nobody wants to be that person <laughs> that gets the whole team pulled back because <laughs> they really want to be back in the office. Yeah. But I just, you know, I kind of laugh about it because, um, are you glad to be back to teaching? I mean, you know, I remember in 2020, it was all done online and everybody made it work. But, you know, to that point, it's yeah. like, it's glad to be back. It, 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 we can make it work. We know we proved it. The tools work. So we mm -hmm. know that. But really, the on-site experience for a class is really not the same thing. The the pleasure that people get from the jokes, the winks, the, 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 the changes in tone, the way you move that you're going to do when you're online you have to stay calm if i raise my voice very strongly people with headphones will say what's going on <laughs> when i'm in a classroom if i slap a table or something or do do crazy things it just works the magic is there so it's much more better much 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 better that way yeah yeah me too <laughs> so um talks wise you actually have a talk you're doing this year too right uh, yeah. uh, viewing beginners I'm code sure. Yeah, yeah, and that's the, the, the teacher in me speaking again. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of students coming to me and saying, I never get any feedback from anyone on my code. Uh, I never got any until I got to your class and you actually read my code and writing stuff on, on paper and telling me what, like, what's good and what's less good and what to think about. We should all do that. And, and th th this applies to uh, teaching, this applies to mentoring, this applies to code reviews. Uh, it's very important. So my, there's many layers to giving feedback on code. I'm going to focus on when you give feedback to beginners, like relative beginners, of course. So someone mm -hmm. beginning his career or her career, or someone who's actually going through the learning process of being in school and learning teaching. So what do you focus on? How do you provide it? It's been a very different experience for me during COVID because I had to do everything by writing. It took forever, man, because 
<laughs> because you don't know who's uh, how the person's feeling when you're giving back your written feedback. It could be hurtful because the person could be depressed or, or self-conscious or something. Right. When you're in person, you can read the, the, the thing better. So it's a different experience. So I think, I really hope it's going to be a good talk because I think it's a very important topic. Yeah, I, you know, I've, so my, I have two thoughts about the talk. One is, um, you know, to your point of giving good feedback, um, I definitely, there's a couple senior developers on our team and, you know, one of them came from that really strict regimented whenever they did a push, everything was always code reviewed, um, best practices. And so uh, when I first started and we first started working together, I, you know, I try not to have, as they say, the programmer's ego, but there's a part when someone's looking at your code, you know, and, and especially if it's something that, you know, I'll joke templates. Um, you know, when I was reading about your class, it says you, you'll you use templates, which I want to ask about, but <laughs> it's, it's interesting though, if you can get someone to help you with that good feedback, whatever the level variances are, because, you know, I've been programming for a long time, but when he would look at anything I did in templates, it was, you know, <laughs> Did you think of this? Did you think of that? And and it took me a little bit to just look at the value of that feedback of becoming a better programmer, you know, mm -hmm. versus having. Um, and so I think that point of where you're like, there's multiple levels of what you can do when it comes to giving feedback. But to be able to look at it, especially with your experience as a, you know, as a teacher um, and come up with those. So. That'd still be a good talk for someone that isn't even necessarily, it would seem to me like you could gain a lot from that talk, even looking at common mistakes and how they're, you know, even if it's not from a review perspective, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't want, I, I, on my website, I have a museum of horror somewhere where I put things that are weird and suggestions to make them better, but I don't think, okay, yeah. but that's not where the talk is going to be headed. I'm more looking as to how you provide feedback that's useful without killing yourself working because it can take a lot of time and can be draining. So there are tricks to make it efficiently too. And I'm, I'm planning, hoping, because it's only an hour, to be able to address the uh, receiving feedback side of things. Because as you said, sometimes it's difficult to do. Now, uh, when I'm writing articles or, or course notes or something, I make sure other people read them. There's always mistakes. <laughs> Even yeah. even on things that have lived for 20 years, there's always stuff that doesn't work or stuff that, that we've skipped over or something. And it's it's not an, a humiliation. So learning process is important. And it's difficult indeed, as you said, to receive that at first, but it's important. Yeah. So I, I'm 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 hoping I'm going to be able to convey those two sides of things. And I'm hoping this talk is going to be useful to my colleagues in general. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So I, you know, I'd said there that I wanted to hit you back up about templates, you know, um, I just, I am curious when you're doing the thinking small, you know, not to jump back to the class, but, you know, as a last question, um, how is it the templates really, how, you know, can you give me an idea how templates play an important part in, in getting the code small? Is it because, yeah. That's, that's interesting. So, you know, when you're writing, let's say you're writing a template class mm -hmm. and you have member functions in there that you don't use. Okay. Well, they're not generated. They won't be in your binary. If you're writing an entire class, normally that's a concrete class. You might have a different effect. Now, with templates, there's another thing. There's specialization. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can have uh, specializations of classes for some types where you can uh, make sure that you generate less code than you would have written in the first place if you had written them by hand because you can make them converge to something that's common and reuse some classes, something very small. You, you can sometimes make some examples disappear because you there are given combinations of integer and type parameters to your templates. There are some functions you can resolve at compile time sometimes and make them go away and stuff. So there's a number of interesting things you can do with templates to make your code at least smaller. Some tricks I pick from other people. There's one that's that I, I use in my class that I took from uh, David Van der Voort's book with, I think it's Nikolai Josetis, where they, they do this cool specialization of a container with pointers and make them converge to the void star ca type with casts. And it, you look at the generated binaries with Godvolt or something, it makes a significant impact and there's no speed impact. So it's pretty cool. So we do, Godvolt is awesome for that, to be honest. So, 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 so we're gonna, yeah, yeah. There's a number of things you would like. Come to my class. I, I may actually do that. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, you know, it's always funny as a volunteer, I'm there for the first weekend, but that Saturday is about the only open day because by the time Sunday hits, we are, you know, it's game on getting everything ready for everyone coming back. And I am excited to say, at least based on our numbers, you know, we definitely have more returning this year than last year. So I think it's going to be a great conference on site. Um, I look forward to seeing you there. Either way, I know, I'll, you know, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you. Um, and I appreciate your time this morning, Patrice. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're a very nice man. Thank you for doing this. You're awesome. Ah, my pleasure. We'll talk to you more soon, Patrice. Cheers. Cheers.